Item Number SCP-345 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures SCP-345 is to be kept inside a secure vault at site Seeing as the object is inert by itself, no further containment is necessary. Personnel seeking to solve SCP-345 need the permission of one Level 2 personnel. SCP-345-1 is to be kept inside a 5m by 5m by 5m sealed room on site. Following Incident 345-1, personnel are only allowed to solve one of the six faces of SCP-345. Trying to solve all faces will result in reassignment to MTF Epsilon-8, the Midwives. Description: SCP-345 is a stone cube whose faces are each divided into nine squares of equal size, and sections of which can be rotated in a fashion similar to a common puzzle toy. Each face of the cube measures 5.7 cm. Instead of the normal six colors commonly found in this kind of puzzle, the squares represent six different materials. An intrusive magmatic rock resembling granite, an intrusive magmatic rock resembling gabbro, an extrusive magmatic rock resembling basalt, a sedimentary rock resembling sandstone, volcanic glass resembling obsidian, and a high-grade metamorphic rock resembling granite gneiss. SCP-345 can be opened by forcibly pulling its sides apart. The cube is hollow, possessing a circular cavity 4.5 cm in diameter in its center. <clears throat> if left open for 5 seconds, SCP-345 will automatically close and shuffle itself for 2 minutes. Afterward, it may be safely handled. Note that it will not be possible to force SCP-345 open after the shuffling takes place. Solving SCP-345 is no harder than solving the common versions of the puzzle. However, if one of the faces become complete, one of the following situations may occur. If the completed face represents one of the magmatic rocks, SCP-345 will heat up to approximately either 1500 degrees Celsius gabbro base, 1200 degrees Celsius basalt base, or 900 degrees Celsius granite base. The amount of time SCP-345 takes to cool down also greatly varies, with the basalt base being the fastest, up to 50 minutes, and the gabbro base being the slowest, up to 250 days. If the completed face represents the sedimentary rock, the cube will start shaking violently for up to ten hours. The sound of either water running or wind howling can be heard coming from inside SCP-345 during the whole process. If the completed face represents volcanic glass, SCP-345 will heat up to approximately 900 degrees Celsius and will take up to five minutes to cool down. If the completed face represents the metamorphic rock, SCP-345 will suffer the same process that would happen if the granite face was completed. After cooling down, the cube will proceed to shuffle itself at high speeds, making loud grinding sounds while it does so, for up to 50 hours. After one of the processes is over, after one of the processes is over, SCP-345 can be opened again with a sculpture made of the same material that was represented by the completed face can be found inside of it. The small sculpture will always be a planet or planetoid 4.5 cm in diameter. These sculptures do not represent any currently known planet. If more than one face is completed at the same time, both corresponding processes will occur, one followed by the other. The statue created will be made of both materials, for instance, the sculpture created by completing the granite and obsidian faces at the same time had its continents made of granite, and its oceans made of obsidian. SCP-345 was recovered by Agent on days after the eruption of the volcano in Ecuador. Claims to have found it near the base of the volcano and took it as a curiosity. He learned about the true nature of the SCP after trying to solve it, suffering third-degree burns in the process. Incident 345-1 On 2000, while Dr. B 
tested SCP-345. She managed to complete all faces, by not opening the cube once a face was completed. SCP-345 received the rumble for three minutes, after which it opened by itself. A small metal sphere, 4.5 cm in diameter, emerged from inside SCP-345 and hovered three meters from the ground. Shortly after, the sphere began rotating, accelerating at a rate of 5 meters per second. Strong gravitational forces were detected in the vicinity of the sphere, visibly affecting objects up to 15 meters away. Seconds later, a dense orange liquid, which an average surface temperature of approximately 4,000 degrees Celsius, began flowing from SCP-345, which proceeded to encompass the metal sphere. Afterward, another denser liquid began flowing out of SCP-345. It also proceeded to encircle the sphere. This liquid continued to flow from inside SCP-345 until the sphere reached a diameter of 2.5 meters, at which point the flow stopped and SCP-345 automatically closed. The resulting sphere was still slowly spinning and hovering above the ground. It was extremely dense, and the gravitational pull was strong enough to severely damage its surroundings. The temperature at the surface varied between 900 and 1600 degrees Celsius. Thirty minutes later, parts of the outermost magma began to cool down, solidifying into a thin rock crust. Twenty hours later, most parts of the sphere were solid rock, with small seas of lava flowing between them. Little volcanoes and mountains could also be observed. At this point, a special containment team with heat-resistant equipment was moved in to relocate the spear to a safer room. The spear was later designated SCP-345-1. Studies regarding the probability of its eventual development of an atmosphere are underway. Note, although at first, we thought that SCP-345 had created a copy of Earth, as of 2000. Studies have shown that it is unlikely that SCP-345-1 will develop an atmosphere, and the composition of its magma is very different from Earth's, containing far smaller quantities of silica and aluminum, and larger amounts of titanium. It is currently unknown if the magma of other planetoids created by SCP-345 would have a similar composition. Perhaps we should have a D-Class completed preferably on an open field. Dr.